Yeah. All right. So going over to the Sacramento Kings, and I, I think we've both in agreement that if Mike Brown can actually, and we've talked about like all these guys that they've signed that have either either Cleveland Cavaliers or Golden State Warrior connection to Mike Brown is because he's trying to establish a culture. And I think we're both in agreement that if Mike Brown can establish that culture slash defensive identity they've been lacking, this could be a dark horse play in borderline playoff team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not I think it comes down to how good Keegan Murray is. Keegan could be the difference maker, for sure. I mean, it looks like his surgery went well and looks to be uh, on track here. Obviously DeMontis Sabonis played terrible for them. And are we playing Sabonis at power forward or center? That's the other question. I think he needs to be center so you run Harrison Barnes and Murray next to him. Then you run De'Aaron Fox and maybe like Davion Mitchell or Kevin Herter at shooting guard and De'Aaron at point. We just need to, you know, Sabonis not to be freaking dreadful. Like he was pretty bad when he got to the Kings. Like he had some okay games, but for the on on the whole, he wasn't great. But right now with Lithuania, I don't know if you've been following, have you? Nope. Listen to his last five games. Okay, five games. This is from August 16th to August 27th against Spain. He dropped 11, 10, and 6. Okay, shot 50% from the field. Falling game was 7, 5, and 6. Then after that, 10, and 5, and 4. Bounced that back with 17, 3, and 4, 15, 8, and 7 while shooting basically 70% from the field and (laughs) averaging about, you know, defensively he hasn't been that great, but offensively he's looking like just something we haven't seen in a while um i i just think we need him to come out here he couldn't shoot like for the life of him in terms of the three ball i just wish we could get back to you know where he was a year or two ago where he was hitting almost league average you know Mm -hmm. like he's showing he can be like a league 35 percent three-point shooter at times or like 32 to 35 where he's kind of like marcus soul where He's not the world's best three-point shooter, but he make he, you ask at least have to respect him. Yeah, he's not. Yeah, exactly. He's not taking many threes, and so you know if he's wide open, he'll he'll take it. He'll, he'll make it. Yeah, he'll make it like one one every three, you know, and like, and it, it's just kind of like he's a threat there. And I just think they need to utilize him more. I just I don't know. So my whole thing is like, do you run Sabonis at the center position? If you do that, you give up so much defense. You give up so much defense because my other option is you run either Rashawn Holmes or one of the other centers that they have at the center position. And you put Sabonis at power forward and you run Barnes and Murray rotating at the wing. And then you run Herter and Fox at the point and shooting guard. I'm sure you'll see some variations of that. I mean, either way, I, I have major concerns with their defense. So that's kind of what we're, you know, you're trying to establish that culture, trying to set that culture. So I don't think this is a, I don't think this is something that needs to be solved right here, right now, this season. What I do want to see is I want to see a play-in appearance, because if you can get a play-in appearance, the ball is, like, you're going in the right direction here. They have a lot of talent on this team. And, you know, we talked a lot about Kevin Herter and Malik Monk making their way over. So maybe you do see some variations of Davion Mitchell either starting some games or coming in with the starters, quick rotation. Uh, Malik Monk, to me, is coming off of the bench because I think he just thrives in that role. Kevin Herter is a really solid offensive player, but defensively, I mean, he's pretty cheeks. Um, I don't think that they'll start Rashawn Holmes and Sabonis, but I'm sure you will see a, I'm sure you'll see a quarter of those games where that might actually happen um i don't mind the kings i'm just chipping away i'm continuing chipping away like they did this past season i don't mind the idea of rashawn holmes and our man sabonis starting because rashawn holmes i know he doesn't shoot any three-pointers or anything like that but he's the rebounder Uh, it's just yes the floor spacing would get screwed with those team too but the idea would be if Fox can rediscover that shot, because that's the other thing is Fox needs to shoot the Fox. 
because Fox, if he can't shoot, the spacing is going to be bad with Holmes, Sabonis, and Fox on the floor. That's why you go Sabonis, Fox, and then Murray, Barnes, and like Herder. So you have three shooters. I just think Sabonis needs to be used like Andrew. Uh, Andrew Bogut was such a good, you know, defensive player. But if you look at Andrew Bogut when he was with, you know, the Warriors, he was actually facilitating like a decent, quite a bit for them. And if you look at it, he was dishing out like three assists a night for them. And that's mm -hmm. something I think they need to do is kind of use Sabonis as this, you know, at the elbow, like at the high elbow, have him go out there and have Herder, Murray, Fox, Barnes, all just cutting around. And then I, whenever you need defense, you just tell Sabonis, sorry, bud, you're going to sit on the bench. And we put in Holmes or, I mean, they have a few options. I, you know how much I love Nemes Nieme, Kieta or Kieta or is it Keta? Keta? I think it's Keta. Nemes Kieta. 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 I get the name wrong. David. But there's also Chemsey Metu was a guy who was surprising. Like mm -hmm. Chemsey Metu, Sacramento gave up on him, and then you have, you know, San, San Antonio gave up on him, and Sacramento picks him up, and then in year two, he he go. I mean, in the first year, he shot 35 percent on one attempt a night, but then he comes out shooting 3.1 attempts from three. And he shot 31%. So he's somebody who's looking like quite respectable from three. Still have Trey Lyles and Al Alex Lynn to round out the bench. So I was a big fan when they got Trey Lyles. And I talked about that in my, one of my Kings videos. And everyone, all the Kings fans were like, huh? I'm like, yeah, Trey, yeah, Trey Lyles. The situation's is interesting like, because I, I really – I don't know. And – the other thing is, is so they brought in Sam Merrill and shout out a Sacramento Kings subscriber who commented this that he heard on the the Kings podcast that they brought in Sam Merrill because guess where he played at college ball Utah State and he's probably going to be on the G League affiliate to play with his college teammate Nemes and I just like there's a few things that I like like Matthew Della Vadova and also they brought in Chima Maneki from overseas but they brought in there's also malik monk we're forgetting about but matthew della vadova is a guy that knows the system there's just i don't i don't know who, who's the defensive guy to lead this team like I, it, harrison barnes had good defense i think the whole thing comes <laughs> it'll be barnes and mitchell and that's the issue that's the what, issue i mean and holmes holmes i mean they have holmes lynn met to and Kieta, who all can be rim protectors. I There's need Sabonis starting and playing every single game, 33 a night. Um, but those 15 minutes, I think Holmes could come in and play defense, and then maybe certain fourth quarters you bench Sabonis for. Um, no, you'd have to play them both. You so what's the close? What's the closing lineup? Because that's the most important lineup. I've Fuck got this. 19, 12, and five from Sabonis. He's not. Not in my closing fuck, lineup. Fuck the starting lineup. What's your my closer lineup? Yeah. Well, it's gonna depend on who I'm playing, but I would say right out of the gate, a closing lineup. Fox and Mitchell, obviously. You need you need <laughs> defense. I don't think there's any other guard out of Terrence Davis, Kevin Herter, Malik Monk, Matthew Dalvadova. I don't think any of those guys are going to be the other guard besides for closing. I think you got to close with Davion and De'Aaron because Davion will make up for De'Aaron's defensive, you know, shortcomings at times. We'll we'll see. I don't know if he'll actually be doing. I don't know if he'll actually be close. I'm I'm assuming that they're going to do Mitchell, Monk, and Herder. As their closers, I don't think that they're. I don't think you a, play Monk to close. He can't. I don't think they're gonna have a staple. I'd view Monk as better defender than Kevin Herter. Oh yeah, I agree, but oh. uh, I don't know. I'd rather go Herter than Monk because of the even though Herter's not a good defender, he's bigger than Monk. Monk's like six two, six three. Malik Monk did a lot for that Lakers team. I'm pro. I'm just what I'm saying is I'm rotating them in and out. I don't think there's going to be a set in stone starting or closing lineup all season for Sacramento. Uh, I think it'll be more situational on who you're playing and how the games look and how the games look. I think Brown will constantly tweak, and I think that's what he should do to try and get some type of lineup going for the second 
half that just fits and meshes well, but there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of bench depth on this team. So you can get really creative with a bunch, every position almost, you can get very creative with it. So it's going to be up to Mike Brown to kind of decide what is working, what isn't working. And I would imagine it's going to take the first half of the season. And I think second half, they're going to start rolling a little bit. I think they'll probably be somewhere between nine and 11 in the Western conference. And from there on out, that's still a good step. That's a still great step in the right direction. You still got 25 year old Darren Fox and, and uh, Damone Sabonis. So maybe you, you know, go out and try and get a bigger, bigger defensive guys at the trade deadline or in the off season. I just think this is a big developmental year. We want to see progress, but it's also kind of, I'm kind of analyzing and assessing who we have on our team and what's working and what isn't working. I hate to say it, but you know, I, well, I want to keep Halliburton if I'm the Kings, but I also definitely understand why they had to kind of move on from him. Maybe Sabonis wasn't the best option, but maybe he was the best option at the time. And um, you know, yeah, like especially if if Darren Fox can get back to like what was it, his sophomore year where he's shooting like 37 from downtown. I mean, that's it's a very big deal. So. I think this team will hover around 500 all season. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think that's that's what you want there. Yeah.